Okay. <clears throat> I now have to officially re-record this. <laughs> I did the whole thing, 20 minutes, and I've got to turn the stupid mic on. Oh, well. <laughs> Here we go. Let's do this again. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I'm going to start for the page, the setup page. Oh, you see my plane. It's here. Boom, boom, boom. It's all good. It works. All right. We're good. Next, you're going to go to calibration. You're going to see your calibration is all done. Everything's done. All my squares are done. I save and reboot. You're going to go to the next one. Make sure I used an uh, airplane without rudder. So I'm using uh, three outputs. I'm using S1 for my motor, S3, which is going to be my elevator, and S4, which is my aileron. Um, you'll see down here what I did is usually it comes with uh, stabilized pitch, which is the elevator, and stabilized roll, which is the aileron. And there's two aileron rolls. Um, I only use one because the plane already came with a Y adapter. So I just use that. There's no point in putting two different ones in. So I just kept that one connector and I got rid of one of the other ones. I just run it off one and it works perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It stabilizes, does everything the way it's supposed to. So when you're done, you know, you can add whatever you want in here. If you want to add more logic, you want to pan and tilt, uh, whatever you want to do, you can add here. Uh, just add a new mixer rule and away you go. So once you're done here, save and reboot. Outputs, I use Enable Servo, um, Stop Motors on Low Throttle, I activated, but um, I don't have BL Heli, and I don't know which kind of uh, speed controllers these are, so I don't think it works. Anyways, I just uh, activate it, and that's it. Uh, the This has already been all changed, because I did my in-flight trim on it, uh, so this is what it came up with. These are the settings, so 1554 and 1512, plane flies beautifully the way it is now. Uh, save, and then you're going to go next one, ports. These are the ports I'm using. So UART1 is going to be for my receiver. I'm using Crossfire. After that, you're going to go down to UART3, which is my GPS right here. And um, after that, we're going to have down here UART5, which is for my video. At, excuse me, since I'm using Waxnail, it's going to be under MSP Display Port. And that we have here. When you're done, save and reboot. Configuration. Uh, what are we down here? So all this stuff up here, I, I didn't touch it. Um, I left it the way it is stock. Uh, coming down further down, I used the uh, GPS for navigation, telemetry output, I use that. Um, enable motors and servo output, I use that. I use OSD, permanently enable air mode on and continuously trim servos on fixed wing, I use that. Up here, I use battery voltage monitoring. I kept it stock 1100. Um, I put battery current monitoring on and I actually changed it. It was 195 when I got it. I put it down to, I put it up to 235. I found it gives me a better amp uh, reading on the aircraft. I also put, uh, cause I'm running a 2200 uh, milliamp 3S LiPo, put three cells and basically everything's a stock. It just, I just changed the capacity here to 2200. This is going to be changed uh, probably in a couple of weeks to lithium ion cells. It's going to be still a three cell, but it's going to be a 4200. So I should get quite a bit more flight time out of it. Uh, and then that's it for that page. Just save and reboot. For fail safe, it's pretty simple. Uh, just return to home. You don't want it to land. You don't want it to drop. If this is not a multi rotor, it's a plane. Uh, so I just put return to home, save, reboot. Pit tuning. Let's go here. So basically this, I don't play with this. Um, when I do my trim, my auto trim in flight, I'll let the flight controller take care of all that and do all that. Uh, next one, rates and expo. Uh, basically I changed nothing. The only thing I changed here was for um, my uh, my expo, for my roll and pitch. It was at 30%, I put it to 40. I noticed it's very, very sensitive on the, the roll access. Um, when it's in manual mode. So I just put it to 40 and that should smooth things out. I haven't flown it yet with 40. I flew it with 30. It was, it was okay, but I put it up to, to 40 to make it better. Uh, everything else here, I left the same though. Yeah, you don't need to worry about that. There's no rudder on this plane. Uh, maximum roll angle, I left it at, uh, I put it actually up to 45 degrees. Uh, give you a bit more return in angle mode. And the same thing for pitch angle, 30 degrees. It's more than enough. Everything else I kept the same, uh, just save. Next screen. Advanced tuning. What do we got in here? Let us see, my friends. I'll be an old man before he gets here. Okay, uh, auto launch. I don't use that. So 
I don't play with it. I left everything stock. I'm going to come down here uh, for my return home settings. I always keep it at least. Um, then after that, I have a 60 uh, meter altitude. I don't need 100. I leave it at 60 where I fly. It's pretty well flat. So I leave it there and uh, climb before return to home. I always have that on because you want it to go up uh, in case you're in an area where if you turn <laughs> before you get smack into something. So I uh, always have it uh, climb before and it goes up to 60 meters and it turns around. Uh, basically, after that, everything else I left stock, um, safe home mode, just return to home. That's it. If I go up here, all uh, fixed wing navigation, I left everything here. The only thing I changed, allow manual throttle uh, increase that I uh, that I put in. Loiter radius, I left it at 75 meters. You could put it to 100 if you want, if you find it's too tight, if you've got a bigger plane. But this thing is so tiny, it's 75, it's, it's, it's fine, it's good. Uh, general, everything else here is the same. I haven't touched anything. Uh, you could tinker with it if you want, but leave it the way it is for me. Save and reboot. Next page. Programming. Oh, wait, I forgot to uh, hold on a second. Uh, hang on, my mistake. Let me go back here. Uh, Race and Expo, I showed it to you. I'm going to go to me mechanics. Uh, all this stuff I didn't touch. I didn't play with anything. The only thing I changed was down here, level trim. I put it to three degrees, and that seems to be fine because even if I... Even when I did my auto trim, it was perfect. It kept it right there. So uh, I'm pretty sure that's a good place to leave it. And that's why I left it. And it's flying perfectly. Save. Go to the next one. Uh, advanced tuning. I think we just did that. Uh, let me see. Yes, we just did that. Uh, programming. There's nothing in here for me. So uh, next, receiver mode. You see here, uh, aileron, elevator, rudder, throttle. When you move your sticks to the right and to the top corner, all these lines here, should go all the way out here if they're not reverse one of them in the radio it's going the wrong way over here a receiver type me it's serial because i'm using uh, crossfire and you'll see you could choose whatever you want here me it's serial and then here i'm choosing uh my serial receiver provider it's crossfire you can have f port uh, i bus s bus you could choose whatever you're using uh all the other stuff i didn't touch i need this anything down here i didn't touch so save and reboot modes I hit everything else because I don't use it. These are the only modes I used. The only mode that I had on here was auto trim. Uh, once it's active, I put it on. I use that mode when I'm done with it. I delete it. I get rid of it. So I don't have an extra switch that can, I can activate by accident. On my channel uh, five, I use the top. Uh, I'm using um, Radio Master uh, Boxer Radio. I'm using the top uh, left button, which is the, the right on the top of the radio. That's my arm button. And it's you push down, armed, let it out, it's off. I'm using a three position switch, which I believe is switch B, I think, on the radio. And uh, that's a three position switch. So when it's up, meaning away from me, uh, it's in manual mode, which is down here. When it's in the middle, it goes to acro mode. And when it's towards me or in the on position, it's an angle mode. And I seem to, I, I, I enjoy flying that. I used to fly in uh, like horizon or cruise mode. Uh, it was nice. You could just let go of the sticks, but I prefer the angle mode. It's, it's much smoother. And the last one is channel seven, uh, which is return to home, which is my switch comp right on the right side of the radio on top. It's a one position, you know, just on off switch. Uh, for adjustments, I don't think there's anything here. No, I never use that. Uh, GPS. Um, hang on a second. Let me get out there. Oops. There, so you can't see my address. All right, uh, GPS navigation, perfect. U Block Seven. It was on U Blocks when you get it. I put seven. It seems to work really, really well. Um, over here, what do we got here? Uh, 3D position hold. Look, I'm in the house. Uh, Eleven satellites. I'm sitting in my living room. And no problem at all. So we have that. Uh, once you're done with that, just save reboot. Alignment tool. Uh, for the alignment tool, what I had to do is because uh, I have the new, um, what's it called again? The uh, Speedy B um, Wing Mini, the new, new, new one, the one that just came out. And pff, it's amazing. It's so tiny. But the thing is, the bottom is the top, top is the bottom. So for the roll axis, you have to flip it 180 degrees. Also reads everything backwards. And that's what I did. And it works perfectly. Uh, so that part's done. You just save and reboot. Bishop Control, I don't use that. OSD. Uh, what do I got for OSD? This is my setup. This is how I like it. I've tried different ones. I'm using the uh, Wax Nail now. 
uh, with the video receiver that goes on my goggles. And I'm using, uh, uh, what are they called again? Crap, I can't remember. Anyways, it'll come back to me. Sky Zone. O four O's. I don't have the O four X. I got the O four O's. But it's such. I find it's such a big screen, uh, even with uh, the wax nail that you're looking uh, like all over the screen. You're looking for stuff. So I, what I decided to do was I did a setup like this where I have everything on the top and the message at the bottom, and you still have plenty of screen. But don't forget when you're flying, you have about there's a it's a line right down the middle, and that's above that's in the sky and everything below is what you're basically looking at so everything should be on the top and you just see it so much better so this is what i'm using uh starting top left i've got my satellites then i've got the link quality right up here for my radio signal um i'm using my altitude and my speed and then i have the mode i'm in acro uh, whatever i'm going to be in after that, i have my uh my cell uh, my pack voltage after that, how many amps i'm pulling how many milliamps i've used and volts per cell. I really like the volts per cell. That's pretty good. And then uh, when uh, it just gives you good, like a gas gauge reading, which is good. And the bottom line is I have my direction home, how far to home. And the last one on the right is going to be the direction of the wind speed. This works really well. Um, it's the first time I've ever used it in a model. I use it in this one now. And I really, really like it. When you launch, um, you got to fly for like uh, maybe one or two passes. And then it'll tell you where the wind speed is coming from. It's really well. It works amazing. And it gives you a good idea when you're going to be crosswind or something. I like it. Nice feature. Um, so that's basically what I use for that. Uh, over, over here for your video format, I'm using the avatar because it's Voxnail. And then it gives you, you're going to see there's um, the preview bars here. You have a purple line at the bottom. Anything below that purple line is going to be Voxnail information. So, um, Make sure whatever you put here on the top doesn't go below here, or else you're going to be you know stepping on the on the wax nail info. You won't be able to see it. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Pilot information, all this other stuff. I don't need that. Oh yeah, and also this little purple thing in the box, purple box at the top, is when it's recording when the wax nail is recording the onboard video and on your goggles, it will display that here. So you want to make sure you have nothing in that area. Uh, units, I use metric because I'm in Canada. Uh, basically, everything else here is default. I left it. I mean, crossfire, everything else is there. That's all good. Anyways, that's it. Save for that. LED strips, everything else here. I don't use any of that. Um, what I suggest doing is once you've done all this, you go into the CLI. And what you're going to do is you want to save everything that's on there. So in case you ever do work on it, anytime I work on my plane, anytime I, I, I tinker with it, I do something, before I do anything, I back it up. So I'll go into here. You're going to click on the bottom here. It says diff all. You're going to go diff all. And you go save the file. And it's going to give you a file here. And you're going to save it to here. So that way, oh, I just did it before. I'm not going to do it again. And just go cancel. And then that will give you, you can save all the information. So that way, if anything ever happens, uh, you'll be able to retrieve it. If you want to copy your OST from one profile to another, you just copy it and move it over. Uh, it, it comes in pretty handy. Anyways, that's that for that. So that's basically the setup for my uh, my Hewing Ranger T1 for my um, for my iNav 7. I'm using iNav 7.0 right now. Anyways, guys, that's it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. And in my next video will be of the plane and the measurements and the control throws and everything else and how I have it all set up. Okay. Anyways, guys, that's it. Take care. Nice talking to you. Bye now.